At ADAPT Community Network, we are here for you. ADAPT believes that individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and the families that advocate for them deserve support. Project Connect is your information and referral resource offering assistance and support to accessing services at ADAPT Community Network. From day habilitation programs, healthcare services, and school age programs to housing assistance and more. Our experts also provide information and referral services to agencies and organizations outside of ADAPT that serve individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities throughout the five boroughs. If you have questions, we have answers. Call us Monday through Friday at 877-827-2666 or email us at projectconnect at adaptcommunitynetwork.org and let us connect you with the services you need. Hello and welcome to ADAPT Community Network's 2021 Virtual Family Connect Summit. We are so pleased that you can join us. This is session B, Housing in You, and our session will begin shortly following this brief introduction. My name is Tracy Bacar, and I'm the Vice President of Family Support Services here at ADAPT Community Network. ADAPT is a nonprofit provider of services for children, teens, and adults with intellectual or developmental disabilities who live across the five boroughs of New York City. To learn more about our range of services, please call Project Connect, our information and referral line at 877-827-2666. During this session, you will get an introduction of the array of housing options and supports available for people with IDD in New York State. The session presenters are Linda Schellenberg, Melissa Wilcox, and Carol Lincoln. Ms. Schellenberg, LMSW, is currently the Director of Community Services at the Center for Family Support. She began working in the field in 1995 as a direct service professional. Ms. Schellenberg is a leader in the field in self-directed and individualized services. Ms. Wilcox is the OPWDD Rental Subsidy Director at ADAPT Community Network. She's been working at the agency for five years and has worked in the field for 23 years. Ms. Wilcox is also a certified navigator and housing ambassador. Ms. Lincoln, LMSW, is currently the Assistant Vice President of Managed Care at ADAPT Community Network, where she has worked for over 28 years. Ms. Lincoln is also an adjunct lecturer at Borough of Manhattan Community College. After the session, we encourage you to submit your questions by emailing them to projectconnect at adaptcommunitynetwork.org. We hope you enjoy the session. Hello everyone, and thank you again for joining ADAPT Community Network's Summit. Today, our session's topic is housing and you. This is an introduction to housing options available via OPWDD funding. Today, our presenters include Carol Lincoln, Assistant Vice President of Managed Care at ADAPT, Melissa Wilcox, the Housing Subsidy Director at ADAPT, and myself, Linda Schellenberg, the Director of Community Services at the Center for Family Support. Today, we're going to give a very basic introduction to the range of housing options available to individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We'll be starting by covering agency operated residential services, then going to agency funded housing subsidy, and then ending with self-direction housing options. Because this is a, a big topic, we will be leaving you with resources for further information on the PowerPoint slide that will be shared. And now I'd like to introduce Carol Lincoln, who will be discussing agency operated residential services. Carol? Hello, everybody. You may have been thinking about residential options for your family member and wondering what is out there that would meet their needs. One option is an OPWDD certified site, which is either overseen by OPWD or a voluntary provider agency. I should say that OPWD is the Office for Persons with Developmental Disabilities. In making this decision, many emotions and feelings will surface and many conversations will take place between family members and professionals within your circle of support. There are no right or wrong answers. 
for your family. This is a personal decision and there are many supports to assist you. Just remember, having a loved one moved out of the house is a move for, towards independence. The process starts with the CRO, a Certified Residential Opportunity Form. Your care manager will complete this form with your signature. This signature acknowledges that you approve of placement and allows OPWD to send out residential packets to provider agencies. The case manager will include current assessments, including life plan, medical, psychosocial, and psychological. The provider agency can only accept packages from the capacity managers at OPWD. OPWD checks to confirm that the individual is eligible for residential services and will apply a priority status based on need to be discussed shortly. OPWD sends packets to agencies based on vacancies. Agencies send this information to OPWDD whenever a vacancy becomes available. But first, I want you to I want to discuss that you may have heard something called the Crow waitlist. This is not a numerical list, but a list indicating eligibility and priority. You are not assigned a number. Placements are based on many factors, including compatibility with other people living in the residence, safety, and appropriate level of care. If your family member is on the current list, they are still eligible for placement. And like everything else, stay on top of your care managers. As I mentioned, the Crow team will ensure that the individual is eligible and you'll get a, a, an indication of need. Let's talk about what the categories of needs are now. First, let's talk about the category of need called emergency need. In this case, the person has no permanent place to live or it's at risk of being homeless. The caregiver has an emergency situation and becomes incapacitated, such as a long-term illness or permanent injury. Or well, the individual is ready for discharge from a hospital, a psychiatric hospital, a nursing home, incarceration, or, the, or is in the hospital ER. Substantial need means increased risk of homelessness, risk of a family member not being able to continue to care for the individual, or they may be transitioning out of a residential school or other such facility. Current needs, the individual family requests a re residential placement, but they're not experiencing any of the issues in the above two categories. Remember, if you're in the current needs category, you're still eligible for placement. Let's talk about what the residential options are. The Intermediate Care Facility, or the ICF, is a long-term care facility with emphasis on medical needs and significant level of care required. It provides 24 hours with strong nursing components. A supervised IRA is a 24 hour supported and supervised residence. They might have a shared bedroom, it might be a single bedroom. Um, they are like, most of them, especially the newer ones that have been developed, are apartment-like settings. The supported IRA is less than 24 hour supervision. The individual must be pretty independent and be able to care for most of their needs. They will receive about four hours a day of supports for help with things like shopping, cooking, cleaning, and things of along those natures. OPWD also offers something called family care. So family care uses certified private homes to provide residential services to individuals of all ages who have an intellectual and developmental disability and they are not able to live independently in the community. The final category that I'm going to discuss is from the New York Foundation for Senior Citizens Home Sharing Program. This program links adult hosts, who are adults generally over 60, um, who have private spaces in their home that they would like to share with an appropriate adult guest. And the adult guest is a person with a developmental disability. Now, moving onward, we're going to have, I'd like to introduce Melissa Wilcox, who will be discussing housing subsidy, another wonderful and viable opportunity for many individuals. Hi, my name is Melissa Wilcox. I am the OPWDD's Rental Subsidy Director at ADAPT Community Network. The OPWDD Rental Subsidy, formerly known as the Individual Supports and Services Subsidy, is a rental subsidy provided by OPWDD. 
It is for those people wanting to live independently in the borough of their choice. In order to be eligible, you must be receiving OPWDD services. You also must contribute 30% of your countable income towards your rent. You have to be 18 years of age, and you must have also obtained and applied for all other federal, state, and local monies before requesting this subsidy. How do you apply? You simply request an application from the agency of your choice and submit that application with supporting documents. What are some of the supporting documents you'll need to provide? A current psychological, a current psychosocial, a physical, your current life plan, and social security information, such as your SSI or SSDI or SSA award letters. You will also need to provide your current Medicaid card and two recent pay stubs if you work. Income information, social security award letters for each roommate if you are to have a roommate. You also have to have your name on your current lease, a DDP2 completed by your care manager recently, a letter from a professional explaining the circumstances that warrant your need for a housing subsidy. There are several processes to the application. Once our, the application is received, ADAPTS Review Committee reviews the application for eligibility and then reviews the information to tell us a little about, about who you are and where you would like to live. What are the housing subsidy provider responsibilities? Inspection of the housing unit must take place five days before you move in and annually thereafter. A review of the lease with the tenant is also the provider's responsibility. It's also their responsibility to secure a copy of the lease from the tenant. It is also the agency's responsibility to ensure rent checks are processed and delivered. Assist the team with setting up the new home and setting up the utilities and cable. Assist the tenant along with their circle of supports with meeting housing responsibilities and assisting with maintaining tenancy and working out tenant issues, tenant landlord issues. Ensure that all OPWDD guidances are adhered to to eliminate risk of having to relocate or risk of losing your housing subsidy. What are some of the frequently asked questions? How is the subsidy amount determined? OPWDDs, that's the standard subsidy based on the number of bedrooms. A one bedroom is normally subsidized at 1324 minus 30% of your countable income. For a two bedroom, 1473 minus 30% of your countable income. And for a three bedroom, 1812 minus 30% of your countable income. How is that 30% accountable income determined? A budget is based on income and deductions. There are several OPWDD guidances, the OPWDD housing subsidy participation agreement, the OPWDD housing subsidy quality assurance standards checklist, and then a memorandum expectations of initial and continued access to the OPWDD housing subsidy beginning January 1st, 2021. Housing assistance services. Some common housing concerns are finding low income and affordable and accessible housing, referrals to rent arrears programs, addressing venom and leaks and bar hazardous conditions, information about eviction process and housing court, advocacy concerning landlord harassment, information about housing subsidies, education on tenant rights, resources for people with disabilities, such as freeze your rent program. Applying an eligibility, who's eligible for housing assistance? Any family living in New York City with at least one household member who is OPWDD eligible. How do you get started? Simply complete an HAS application and submit it to the agency. A request to open the case is submitted to the Developmental Disabilities Regional Office by HAS. The D DDRO sends approval to HA HAS and the housing advocate is then assigned to the case. Home mods and repairs. 
The Doorways to Independence program provides home modification services to people with developmental disabilities, the elderly and the medically fragile. Funding is available to cover most of the modifications that will improve physical access and safety within the home. Homeowners, co-op owners, and renters may qualify for assistance. For general inquiries about any of these programs, please refer to our Project Connect number at 877-827-2666 or projectconnect at adaptcommunitynetwork.org. I'm here to talk to you today about housing options using self-direction. This is Oscar. Many of you might have seen Oscar at some of the uh, ADAPT live fairs and conferences. Uh, he's been living in his own apartment since 2015. He has a very interesting life. And he is somebody who is using living caregiver, which I will talk about. He has two roommates, um, Louis, um, who has been a teacher, and Mia is somebody he knew from work. And they are companions to him, roommates. They spend time together. In addition, they provide some very essential support, such as being there in the event of an emergency and um, teaching him some life skills. So he is an example of somebody who um, has really uh, uh, is living independently and has his own life. Okay, so as Melissa mentioned, um, housing subsidy is the same in self-direction as it is in uh, agency provided um, support. So a person that's choosing housing subsidy like Oscar um, would is choosing to live independently, needs to have a, a lease and have clear tenancy rights. Um, he contributes 30% towards the rent and, and the payment standards, as Melissa mentioned, are based on the housing community renewal. Okay, and in, in Oscar's case, he does have a housing subsidy because the amount of rent um, exceeded his ability to pay. So this allows him to be able to live independently and live in caregiver. So um, as I highlighted with Oscar, he has two roommates that are live-in caregivers and, and a live-in caregiver through self-direction is a subsidy. So the budget um, funding pays for the room and board share of the two roommates that he has. And in exchange for them living in Oscar's home, free room and board, they provide um, physical, social, emotional support to him. Um, it's a very good option for somebody who is able to live independently, but maybe they're concerned about what if there's an emergency, or maybe they want to live independently, but not alone. They want to have roommates so that um, they have that companion companionship. So this is a really good option for that. Um, the it's there is a very clear uh, agreements that get drafted between the individual and let's say their family members and the live-in caregiver. Um, on what the, uh, uh, their responsibilities include. And there's some specific labor laws related to this. So if you're choosing this as an option, you would work with a self-direction support broker to really do a deep dive to make sure you've got a good written agreement on what's involved. Another option in self-direction is called a paid neighbor. So similar to a living caregiver, a paid neighbor is somebody who would provide uh, a support to the individual, like in the event of an emergency but they don't live in the home. So the requirement for a paid neighbor is that they live within 30 minutes of the person and they can call upon that paid neighbor to help in the event of an emergency. And again, there's a very specific defined contract that would outline all the roles and responsibilities. So for a paid neighbor, they receive a stipend, the living caregiver, they receive free room and board, but they're very similar. Both the living caregiver and the paid neighbor the individuals can also be hired as a staff person. So they can be hired to provide community hab if part of their role would be to teach skills or to provide assistance or support as defined in community habilitation. Or maybe they could be um, hired as a CDPAP or personal carry to the individual depending upon the needs. Okay, so the process. So self-direction, the first thing you wanna do is bring together a circle of support and identify a broker and a fiscal intermediary and embark on a person-centered planning process. We've mentioned a lot of housing options available. You wanna look into affordable housing, um, section eight, and I'll share the link to the, uh, the New York City um, housing lottery website to get on the list for affordable housing. And you want to identify all the staff supports that might be needed. 
So uh, this, this is a really important, the person-centered planning process is really important because everybody's situation is unique and different and you wanna build a plan and link those supports to really um, best support the person's needs. Okay, you wanna make sure you're understanding risks and benefits. Self-direction means you are directing it yourself. You need to have very active and involved circle of support. Um, I would encourage uh, regular meetings and developing a map of all those steps that need to be taken um, to set this up in a good way and to have backup plans clearly identified in, in case of a worst case scenario. The New York Alliance um, is a provider association that has done a lot of work on shared living and there's an excellent uh, toolkit that can be found on their website and here's the link to help understand the different labor laws and regulations and ways to um, integrate technology to also enhance the ease of communication. And this is Oscar. He has this curtain hanging in his living room. He didn't think he could live in his own apartment or have a job, and now he knows that he can. So in closing, we'd like to share with you some resource links. Again, the New York Alliance, um, as uh, Melissa mentioned, ADAPT Project Connect Hotline and their email address, uh, ABLE, which, which you can get more information on ways to save uh, above the resource limit for different um, needs that a person might have. And housingconnect.nyc.gov, if you're in New York City, this is the place to go to get on an affordable housing wait list. We'd like to thank you for um, attending this session. And again, this is just a very brief overview. We hope that this sparks some interest and that you work with your care manager to pursue those options that would be best for you. Take care and have a good day.